Hello, hello. Welcome to the Pav Show. Today, my guest is my love, my life partner, Andrew Green. <laughs> Thank you. Audience of one. Uh, so I decided to have you on today because I have had some listeners ask me about my own relationship. And so I decided to take a few questions and go from there. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay, question number one, how did we meet? Would you like to take this one? Would I? <laughs> we met on a wellness retreat in the Dominican Republic. Yep. And would you like to continue? Sure. Uh, we met on a wellness retreat in the Dominican Republic and we met right outside the airport there and I asked PB what she does <laughs> because I collect degrees and, <laughs> <laughs> and I he was asleep during those days you were speaking to PB's ego <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up sort of being close during the during the nights um at that that first night we ended up spending some time together and it was sort of flirtatious in nature and then the second night we ended up actually you know spending the night together ended up sleeping together and then we just did that every night of the retreat and <laughs> so you know to anyone who thinks that there's a particular way to start a relationship uh, we they we really started, isn't. right we started it in the least sort of romantic romantic way possible yeah um i do have to say that the retreat provided the space for us that allowed us to be really vulnerable and because that were, was the case we opened up to each other about about quite a few deep things that allowed us to connect in a really raw, authentic kind of way. Absolutely. So it was, it was very interesting that we met when neither of us were looking for a relationship. Uh, we were simply mm -hmm. there to meet other people, to explore different possibilities in ourselves and in our lives. And that is perhaps one of the best places to be, in my opinion, for finding a partner is you're not looking for a partner. You are just aware of what's going on. You are there for yourself and nobody is a potential partner. Everyone is just a person. Um, we also met during a time in the world where pandemonium was about to strike. So we met right before the pandemic. And we built a relationship, a friendly, flirtatious relationship long distance for a while. And then I moved to Boston and we spent every day together because we were in lockdown. And that kind of brought us closer together. It sped things up. Definitely. And we never put a, we didn't put a label on it even before she moved in with me um, into Boston, if I remember correctly. Did we put a label on it? Okay. No, oh, no. Yeah, I'm shaking my head like for anyone <laughs> listening, they can, <laughs> they can see me. <laughs> for anyone listening, I shook my head no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we didn't put a label on it. For me, there was always just this feeling of this is going in a good direction. And I was very surprised by that because I had always imagined that there would be a lot of thinking involved when I found the one, if you will, <laughs> right? I'd always thought it would be very much, is this the right decision for me? And, you know, does this fit in with my life and whatever? But once once we did meet and become closer uh that whole process was very seamless and it 
it was a no brainer for, for PV to move from Florida to Boston and just move in with me. I was like, yeah, why not? Like what, but what else would we do if, if you're moving from Florida? Cause you wanted to move at that time. What else would we do? We, would we just have two separate apartments and spend all our time together? Like it only made sense. Right. Right. And we were really good friends. We were really good friends by that point. So it was like, yeah, we were living with a close friend and if things don't work out, whatever, we're, we're still good friends. It'll be fine. I was in a place, I was in a place in my life where I was still technically married and there was a lot of conflict, inner conflict that was going on because I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do or let go, move on. Uh, But the way things started, it was, it really forced me to face myself and realize like, wait, what are you doing with your life? And what are you doing to the person that's with you right now? You know? Yeah. So yeah, I had to cut all of that. Um, but then we moved in together. And one of the first things that we did, I remember that I think has been really a good habit for us in our relationship, a collective habit, is open phone policy. That was something I kept a lot of secrets in my past relationship. And it was like, it wasn't, I didn't keep a lot of secrets. I was just a secretive person. Mm. So there was, even when there was nothing to hide, it was like, I felt like there was something to hide mm. um, because I was just so disconnected. And so learning from that experience, I asked myself, what kind of relationship do I want moving forward? And I just wanted an open one, an open, honest relationship where I didn't feel like I had to hide anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I had when I met you, I had recently gotten out of a relationship, uh, somewhat similar circumstances in that regard, um, even though you still had a label on it. And uh, one of the things that I realized while I was in the Dominican Republic with you, not because of you necessarily, just because of a lot of internal work I had done, was that whenever a relationship Uh, happened to show up in my life it was not going to be because of me wanting to possess somebody me wanting uh, a particular type of person who who does particular things Um, it was the only way that it was going to work if I wanted to find a meaningful partnership with somebody who was actually attracted to me and wanted to be with me was if I just did my thing and let them do their thing. And then if that works, you just gravitate towards each other. There's no compulsion towards them being a particular way. And so I think the open phone policy was was absolutely huge because it was, we're not compelled to act a particular way. We can just be ourselves. You can see who I'm texting and I have no problems with it. And then that really set a, a, a standard of trust in our relationship, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Not, not having too much control. Definitely set a standard in our relationship. Uh, we communicated a lot. We communicated a lot, which leads me to my next question. What's our favorite thing to do together? We have- <laughs> We have this thing that we call porch time. And at the end of every day, we sit on our porch and, you know, if it's raining, we'll sit on our couch, but it's still labeled porch time. (laughs) Uh, And we just talk about our days. And that seems to be the case with everything, not just about our days, but whenever something comes up, brainstorming, working together, it's because we communicate so, so much and so openly and so honestly. Right. So I, I guess we should say, if we didn't make it clear already, that we're we're very happy in our relationship. It's it's been a very, uh, it's been a very freeing and amazing thing to to be with somebody who so closely aligns um, with with what I want in life and in any given moment, really, like somebody that I want to spend time with, whenever you know. I, at the end of the day, I'd rather spending time with you and so on that note since we we are exploring relationship dynamics it's like we 
have a healthy relationship, I think in, in large part because we, we are invested in each other's way of thinking. We're invested in each other's success. We're, we ask what's going on, how's that going? We really give each other the time of day, even when we maybe have other things that we'd like to talk about. Um, so yeah, the porch time is, is almost, a, it's a debrief, it's a, it's a meeting of sorts. Wait, but, so the question was, what is your favorite thing to do together? Is that your favorite thing to do together as well? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah I, I, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Spend time together. Like, I mean, it, it's... Have brain sex. Well, I, I just, <laughs> if spending time together means watching a movie together, then that's not spending time together. It's it's like when we really... I mean, sometimes. Wait, sometimes. wait, wait. Sometimes. Not all the time, though. That's not our favorite thing to do. Or even the most common thing that we do. I think time is my favorite. Yeah. And then, you know, hiking or walking. Walking, we go for long walks. That's my second. It, it always, my, my favorite time that we spend together is time where we are just talking and, and it could be, it, it could be debriefing on the day. It could be just discussing ideas. It could be anything. Um, but that's definitely that's definitely my favorite time is when we're not focusing on something else. Yeah. Yes, mine too. Uh, what's, what's your th favorite thing about each other? Ooh. Ooh. My favorite thing that you call me out on my shit. You keep me honest. That's <laughs> gotta be my favorite thing. You know, I, the fact that I have the audacity to make up words during Scrabble. Because <laughs> no one, very few people question me. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that I like that you can also give me critiques of my behaviors and patterns to help me mm -hmm. gain self-awareness yeah uh what do I like most about you that's such an odd question because it's, it's trying to reduce yeah uh, it's trying to reduce everything but if I had to say what I like about you is your, your spirit and your, your zest for life, the, the way, yeah, okay, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, which, which shows both up in, in the things that you're doing, broadly speaking on a, you know, on a sheet of paper sort of thing, but also just in the way that you show up and the energy that you have the smiles and everything else, uh, that's such that's so critical i mean that that's what that's what attraction is right it's like it's a big part of it it's just you know loving the spirit in somebody else and uh that's been there from the beginning even when you were a little bit more on the, the crazier side yeah <laughs> say something else <laughs> but I did. you can say it just don't worry about it um and yeah, so so definitely just your your loving and energetic spirit. I appreciate that. I love you. I love you too. Um, next question is, do you fight and how do you work through conflict together? Oh, mm. That's a good one. Um, yes, we fight. Of course, everybody fights. Every couple fights. And if they tell you that you don't, they don't, that, uh, I'm not sure about that. Every couple uh, fights, has, we all have disagreements. Well, I, I, I'll just relate this to my previous relationship. So we, we rarely fought. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that that was not a reflection of the health of the relationship. It was more a reflection of our own denial of the situation that we shouldn't be together, right? Uh, I think it was, it was you know, let's try to keep things nice and cozy and conflict free so that we can mask the actual situation, which is going to end at some moments. I think that our fights have almost always resulted in forward progress and it, it wasn't always our fights, right? Because we didn't have in the last relationship, very rarely was there anything you call fight. Uh, Every time we've fought, it's because we're both 
independent human beings who have certain expectations of the other person and of ourselves. And uh, if those aren't being met, then you have to bring it up, right? Because you can't settle. And I think that every single time we've had a fight, it was, it was justified in some way, even if it was just emotional on one of our parts, right? It, it has something deeper to it. There's something deeper going on, even if it's not expressed in the words and we were able to grow from it. We were able to understand each other better from it. And I, I think that the fights have been very, very helpful. And so sorting through fights is, is kind of, the question was. How do you work through the conflict together? And I think communication, you know, we, we talk about it. We talk about it. Right. And in the beginning, we didn't necessarily talk about it because I would blow up often. And that's, that's where you would, you, when you first told me I had a pattern of blowing up. I got really <laughs> offended. Mm -hmm. And then I had a conversation with myself and told myself the reason you're getting offended is because there's truth in that statement. And then I noticed, yeah, the blow ups were there. But over time, we've managed to keep a cool head. And we, as in me and the people in my head, <laughs> and proceed with caution, you know, or and communicate appropriately. Because as soon as you can feel vibes and agitation in the air, and having a dog who is so in tune to the energy in the household and starts barking before you even raise your voice <laughs> can either help be an alarm to force you to cool down or an instigator mm -hmm. really there's no telling I, so i think that if the, if the question is how do we work through conflicts the the answer is because we want to and we identify each other as mutual players on on this team right yes I think, there's I think, no winning or losing right right so in, in the beginning there may have been some sort of doubt in our heads about is this the person I'm going to be with for a long time and that's no longer the case so the way I think about it is like okay we're going to work through this I just how am I going to do it right like if you're if you're in a mood it's it's not a question of am I right it's not a question of I'm going to win this fight. It's a question of, okay, well, how do I make sure that she's in a good place and I'm in a good place? And that's that. Like, it, there's no rationale behind the situation necessarily. Yeah. And that's getting to a good place is definitely, we got to talk everything out. I think we talk a lot. We talk a lot about everything all the time. Mm -hmm. We really yeah. do. Because in when we first moved in together, the first year, I remember realizing there were so many f little fights that we had that were all because of a lack of communication. So I started making stories in my head about what was going on. And one in particular is Andrew walks faster than I do. And he's walking in front of me. <laughs> And I started telling myself, wow, he's so disrespectful. And why can't he just like slow down and this and that? And I got so upset about it. <laughs> and then I met your parents. And that's just how it is. Like your mom walks faster than your dad. And everything's okay. It's just walking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the meanwhile, Andrew is probably just like, what's going on? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Why should that? Very, very strange. <laughs> yeah, well, I would just tell you the truth, which is that maybe just pulls. And, and I didn't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess just communicating, communicating with each other. And when I told you, oh, wait, so I thought it was like this this is what I was thinking. And you said to me, wait, what? No, not at all. I think, I think once, if you're in a relationship and you really nail down the fact that you have a mutual vision for life, right? You don't hide from 
the potential disagreements in the vision for life, then at that point, if you have an argument, if you have a, if you have a blow up that happens and some, but one part of the relationship says, oh, well, I don't want to work this out. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to, whatever. It's like, you're saying that you don't want to, you don't want to do this. That's what you're saying. You're, you're, you're giving an, a very clear indication that you're not interested in the thing that we said we were interested in, which is, you know, figuring this out, being a team. And so I think that's just part of like the duty of being in a relationship is just being there to communicate, not necessarily like right now, right? Because we've tried that, but- um, Yeah, neither one of us likes, well, and at the same time, it's so important because yeah, I used to want to cool down and really taking a break to cool down would actually just heat me up because my ego would just egg me on. Like, no, you're right because of this, 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 this. And then I would have so much fuel for when we came back to the conversation. Whereas, you know, you really like to take care of it directly and in that moment. And it really taught me in some ways that, yeah, you got to address it in those moments so that it doesn't simmer overnight because the energy you sleep with, then you wake up with. I remember we had one argument about, I don't even remember what, but it lasted. I ended up being really angry for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I realized I'm causing my own suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in a relationship, I think what I've learned from my relationship is that if you love each other, you will, you will work it out. You will right. figure out the concession and it, it shouldn't feel like a concession, right? And maybe it does in a moment because we're not perfect at judging what's going on. Uh, but if it feels like a concession in the long term, then it's like, you're not supposed to be with them. Exactly. Because you're not my other half. We're two holes. We're two whole people's. Are you just putting this whole podcast to say that? No. <laughs> we are, it's just, that's, it came to my mind. We are, we are two holes and yes. we work better in pairs. And I know I've said this to you before, I agree. but I, I genuinely believe that two heads are better than one. And there are some activities that have really helped me realize what working together actually means. Like sitting in a car for hours together, those discussions, it's like, we went deep and building your equipment for your gym, gym studio. Hmm. Where yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was hard work. It was hard work, what, but we did it. Yeah. Okay. So how have you adjusted to life before and after the pandemic? I think we need to address codependence because we had a conversation on that as well for a while. Hmm. I, when I moved up to Boston, it was yeah pandemic and then I didn't really I scrapped all my friends because I realized I was friends with people that didn't necessarily align with my values and I was ready to start new but I didn't have friends because the pandemic made it almost impossible to make new friends right so but Andrew had friends and he he had clients and a life going on <laughs> And there's a moment where he mentioned going to do a boys trip and I became a little jealous. And then I had to remind myself like, no, if you, if you really love him, you wouldn't be jealous at all because he's happy doing these things. You would be supportive and encouraging. And if you really wanted, you're jealous because you want that, then go build it and create it yourself. Mm -hmm. And that adjusting to life before and after the pandemic, that was the process for me. Because as the world started to open up, plans started happening. And we have a pretty social life now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really feel the weight of the pandemic. I mean, it, it was actually a really good thing for me to get out of the company that I was working for. It was, it was a necessary step because they had to lay off everyone. And so I just became an independent contractor and, uh, and it, it was immediately apparent that it was going to work out. Like people were going to keep uh, training with me. 
And so in many ways, the pandemic was, was very freeing for me. It was, it was, it was a time for me to initially have more time to myself and more time for you. And so, you know, cold, nurture our relationship, grow personally. And then there was a time, so this isn't really related to the pandemic as much, but there was, of course, a time where PV was uh, going through some significant, you know, withdrawal symptoms and uh, just very, very unstable. And the interesting thing to note there is that while that may seem like a really rough period for me, you would imagine that that would have been really rough. There's two interesting things about it when she was going through a lot of, of the changes and then she was being very erratic was one was that I never had any doubt in the relationship. I had this feeling that it was going to work out. It was, it was very strange. I like, I didn't know why uh, I would, you know, talk to one or two friends in confidence and be like, mm, this is pretty crazy. Um, this is pretty nuts. What's going on? But I, I think she's going to get through it. Uh, but the second thing to note is that I wouldn't have it any other way because I learned so much about how to reg regulate my own emotions and, and to separate what's right, putting in quotation marks, right from what is actually useful, what's actually prudent in that moment to do. Um, and that's such a critical thing in relationships, I think, because if your goal is to always be right, well, then you're pretending that you can win an argument with your partner. And if yeah. one of you wins an argument, you both lose because you're a team. So uh, I think that that was, that was the crash course of, of the pandemic is spending so much time together and being able to figure out, figure you out and figure us out in such a deeper way. Yeah, because our first year of living together was the first year of the pandemic of being in lockdowns. Uh, and the challenges of living together, everyone has these challenges. I've lived with other people and that first year is just getting to know each other. And yeah, there's tension there. There's tension of just getting to know the person you're living with because you they're not a carbon copy of you. You don't have the same exact habits. And so, yeah, you're navigating that world. And on top of that, it's in a really heightened state because you can't go outside. <laughs> For a while, it, everyone was scared to go outside. Right. And so I remember the first uh, couple months were euphoric. It felt like a dream because I'd just come out of such a rough place in my life. And then the remainder of the months were some, yeah, hard decision making. So like, am I really going to continue taking a stimulant and believe that there's something wrong with me? And getting off of that medication had withdrawal symptoms. So yeah, it was, it was a lot all at once. It was a lot all at once. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had two different experiences. Yes, we definitely had two different experiences, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, but I, again, I wouldn't have it any other way. I think we grew closer. I think it yeah. probably showed you that agreed. I was I was in it yes okay. agreed I mean it did bring us closer it did bring us closer it it sped up so much of what we could have learned about each other and now we we don't really have fights we have disagreements uh, yeah we I mean there's we have moments of tension mm -hmm. but you need that push and pull in a relationship Right. These things interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think that you have to question whether you're actually alive if you disagree with everything your partner says. <laughs> no, you have to elaborate on that. Well, I'm just saying that at that point, it's are you just doing things to please them, or are you are you actually pointing out their flaws and their shortcomings, which do exist because you're a human. Um, I, like, I think that the conception of love as 
this euphoric state of, of bliss where everything is perfect all the time and that you complete each other's sentences. There's some truth to it, but there is also the truth that if both of you aren't getting better and aren't exploring new territory, there's going to be, there's going to be a stagnation in yourselves, obviously, but then the feeling that you get for that person is going to diminish. And so I think that by not encouraging each other to be better, by not being critical, you actually make it more likely that the relationship is going to sort of grind to a halt. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. You, you have a worthy adversary. Mm. Yes. To, you push each other to be better. I feel like there's always something happening in our relationship. Uh, and you've come home and said that at one point too. And I think having that balance is so important where you, you kind of have shown me everything I've accomplished in the past because I can be like a go, go, go kind of person. Uh, and at the same time, I've shown you like, okay, yeah, let's also aim higher let's let's do things like dream big mm -hmm. yes yes and we were very aligned with the things that we care about i think that that is that is probably the most critical thing is, is that obviously there's mutual attraction but that we are actually genuinely aligned in terms of most of the things that we hold to be important. Yes, I think it's important to know who you are. Right. Although this was not the case yeah. in our relationship, but it has, I've learned from this experience that it's important to know who you are before you decide to pair up with someone so that you know what you want in a partner as well. And you know whether you guys will work or not. Or, or, or you're with somebody who's helping to helping you to figure that out be right awesome. because there was in that regard I feel like there's a chance of there's this aspect of um luck in our equation of how we met and how things have worked out because yes we put a lot of work in but given the circumstances they it could have gone gone the opposite direction as well maybe yeah maybe maybe right yeah speculation <laughs> i don't know I, I i think there was some alignment from the beginning uh, there was a serious alignment from the beginning just two people who were very nerdy very <laughs> probably you know both a little bit self-absorbed uh, <laughs> yeah. people who uh were had had their share of experiences with drugs like good and bad and, uh people who had read a lot interest in music we both played music um and so there was a lot of things that sort of warmed us to each other it wasn't just like this shot in the dark it was it was okay well i think it's really cool that she's you know, passionate about this academic subject uh which you know who knows if you were, but, and, and that she's, she's a teacher. I like, that's, that's so cool. Like she's spreading knowledge. I'm so big on education. And I think, so I think that there were a lot of pieces that were there in the beginning. It wasn't necessarily luck. Uh, I don't think there was anything lucky except for the fact that we did meet in the first place. Um, so you really have a way of looking back and pointing out or re seeing all of the patterns you really helped me look. That's what I was saying. This is why I love you. I'm so grateful for you. Oh, well, thanks. Um, all right. So I just have two questions about you okay. specifically. Hi. Enough about us. I'm here. Uh, one is, so how did you fall in love with fitness? Because that is what you have devoted your life to. That is what your work is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'll ask you the second one afterwards. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so I'm a personal trainer uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. And I have been doing this for about six years. I actually own my own studio. I have a very 
steady client base. I have very little, I have very little apprehension about the fact that that'll continue to grow uh, in the way that it needs to. But initially fitness was an escape because in my high school years, and this is you know interesting in light of PV's history is that I had an Adderall addiction um, and, and just a drug addiction in general, but it culminated um, going from sophomore to senior year, it culminated in the fact that senior year, I was, I was heavily addicted to Adderall and Vyvanse. I was buying like stuff on the side. I had convinced my parents that I needed a prescription, but that wasn't enough. And there was no academic component to it. It was literally just like, I like to feel high on this stuff. I like to feel in control. And I barely graduated. It was not, it was not good. And then ultimately in college, which I don't know why my parents trusted me to go to college. I, I ended up needing to fill that void because I realized, okay, oof, dodge the bullet there. And I was still, you know, smoking. I was using tons of caffeine to kind of have some approximation of that feeling. And I still use more than I should. And uh, I was like, how am I going to feel this way? How am I going to feel confident? How am I going to feel physically vital? And so that's when I started weightlifting. Um, and it was also anger at myself for, for, you know, stealing money from my parents. It was anger at myself for uh, wasting years where I could have been bettering myself, um, but was just degenerating at a local park. And so weight training started out as an outlet for all of the, the drug abuse that I had done and all of the self-loathing I had. And then when I got out of, so it actually ended up becoming a balancing act for my psyche. And, um, and but then what it turned into uh, was something that was a pursuit of self-betterment. It was, you know, I'm getting better at something. I'm feeling more healthy. I'm feeling more in control. I can make myself feel good rather than having some chemical make me feel good. And then ultimately I thought I would just be a recreational lifter for my entire life. But my first job, I hated it. It was uh, at a research lab after I got my biochemistry degree. Um, I just hated everything about it. And I decided to become a trainer just as like, a, I want to do something. I want to stay in the city. I don't want to move back in with my parents. And, uh, and <laughs> it certainly was not my idea of the career that I wanted. And to all of you who are a little bit unsure of what you want to do or have you know an idea but it's not perfect um i didn't think that i was going to be a trainer for more than like six months and here i am six years later uh loving what i do loving every minute of it um but it came from a place of suffering and you know that's just so often the case is that i couldn't control my mood i couldn't control my health i was a skinny kid who had self-confidence issues and this is what has been born of it. It's no, it's, it's actually not improbable. It's no coincidence that that's the way it started. Wow. So what does health mean to you now? Health is a great question. So health to me means being in love with your own body and not in the sense of like flexing in front of the mirror that you've definitely caught me doing that. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, being in love with the way that you feel, the way that you function, you have a reciprocal relationship with your environment. So you make good decisions, uh, um, it, by your own estimation on how to feed yourself, how to fuel yourself, the amount of sleep that you get. And it starts this, this relationship with the world that is, the only way I can say it is reciprocal. It's, it's food works for me, water works for me, air works for me, the ground works for me, gravity works for me. And that is, I think, so heavily responsible for, for my self-development that has occurred since, since college began, since even like two years ago. Just always understanding that, that I've got this on a physical level and that translating to confidence in so many other areas of my life. Um, 
So I think health is being able to feel at home in your own body. Wow. Well, thank you so, so much. Where can people find you if they want to know more about you, Andrew? I, great question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now, I, so I have an Instagram that I haven't posted on for a while, but you can get a good idea of what I'm about. Um, that's uh, green with an E at the end, underscore gains. Uh, and so that Instagram has some good information that I posted in the past. And then I also have a YouTube channel that I'm beginning work on once again after a long period of opening a studio. Uh, uh, it's got, got just like nervous thinking about it. <laughs> and and uh, but so that YouTube channel is just green with an E space gains. And so if you want to subscribe to that channel, you'll be getting videos that are just helping to make fitness make sense um, and communicate a lot of the things that I see people misunderstand that I've misunderstood in the past. And so those would be the two best ways to find me and always feel free to reach out, you know, directly via Instagram or, or in the comment section of a YouTube video, or you can talk to Palachek. And I would be, I would love to connect with anyone who's interested in finding out what health means for them. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. Well, thank you for pretending that I'm a relationship expert. It's <laughs>